Hello everyone. So today we are going to do something that I think is going to be really fun. And that is I'm going to take all of these flowers that I just harvested last evening from my garden. And remember, these are all cut and come again flowers. So the plants that these came from will still continue to produce blooms. And I probably can harvest this every few days around this time of the year. It really is incredible how productive my gardens can be since they're not that large. But I'm gonna take all of these, well, most of them, and use them to cover one of my walls in flowers. And I'll take you over there in a second and show you all of the vases and everything that I have. But I'm really excited because I typically will harvest my flowers for giveaway bouquets. I decided I'm gonna use them for myself. Now on the downside, when you do have bouquets of flowers, they don't last forever. I mean, these might look good for a few days up to a week, but I think in that time, I will really enjoy my wall. And I harvested a lot with taller stems this time, which I think will work really well with what I have. And then any extra flowers, those I will use for giveaway bouquets. So let me take you over to the wall that we're gonna be decorating. This right here is the wall that we are gonna fill with flowers. This is my gallery wall. I am still adding more photos to it over time. We are going to put the flowers into these vases, but let me just show you what is on the wall here. So this is all botanical illustrations. None of these are expensive. The illustrations are not expensive at all. I've either found them at thrift stores, antique stores, or for example, this was already framed at a thrift store. Where I find there can be some extra cost is in the framing, like getting things professionally framed at Michael's is still pretty expensive. So I actually found a website, I think it's custom framing or something. I will link it down below, but you can order frames in whatever sizes. So a lot of these botanical prints are kind of odd sizes. So this one right here with the butterflies, I actually ordered a frame specifically that size. I think I did the same for that print up there, which I actually got in Nice, France. So it's a nice reminder every time I look at this wall, but the plan is to cover this wall in botanical prints at some point. So now let's talk about the vases. And as I'm looking at them, I almost wish I had more, but I will stick with what I have. So these two wall vases I got from our house, A-R-H-A-U-S, I think is how it's spelled. I got these last Black Friday sale. So there's a larger one on this side, a slightly smaller one over on this side, and they just come with a hole in them. You put a nail, into the wall and then you hang the vase. Now, a fun fact that you didn't ask to know, or at least I think it's a fun fact, is that the R house that's in Lincoln Park, where that is currently located, is the location where in the lake house with Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves, they filmed her apartment. So when he planted the tree and then that tree grew, that is where it's currently located. So that's what I think of every time I drive by is the lake house movie. Then we have this Candelabra, which I love. I made this whole contraption. So I didn't make the candelabra, obviously. That I found, again, just at a thrift store. I measured the candle holder diameter and then got test tubes that were that same size. And then I hot glued them in and I hot glued them, let them sit for 24 hours. It has now been over three years and never once has a test tube fallen out. I take this off the wall to clean it. I clean it with a toothbrush and they have stayed in. So that super glue has held up really well. Now I've had a love for a while of turning candle holders into plant propagation stations. That was my original use for the candelabra. And that's what I use it for over the winter is propagating my plants, usually a pothos plant. But then I don't know how long this company has been around, but I got tagged in it by so many people. They're these test tubes, which the company is called Vase Base or Base Vase, one of those two, link it down below, not sponsored, but they have this, I guess, rubber bottom and they are made to fit into most standard size candle holders. So now I have these, which is a lot better because these actually come out and I can clean them much easier than them being stuck in the candelabra that I hot glued, but how cool is that? So now I also use these for vases and maybe with some of the extra flowers, I will put them in here as well. But now, I'm gonna go through all of these flowers and I'll tell you which varieties they are in case you want to grow some of them for next year and then we'll get to decorating the wall and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. All right, let's start with the smallest vase because I think that'll be the easiest. Now, 
I know that I have gone through some of these flowers before, either on garden tours or when I was specifically harvesting them, but I figure it can never help to go over the names. That way, again, in case you are interested, you can go ahead and grab some seeds. I have sunflowers here. This is the Sunrich Summer Provence sunflowers. These are my Hazaster Hagen light blue China asters. I have the Queen Lime Orange Zinnia. These are just the regular Queen Lime. And then I have the Envy Zinnia. And that's everything that is in this jar. Let's set you over there. This one is a lot of the Queen Lime. So Queen Lime Orange, Queen Lime Red. Are you, I think you're one of, well, actually, are you one of the Envy Zinnias? I think you're one of the Envy. These are the Envy Zinnias. This is the Tower Chamois Aster, Zaster Hagen Light Blue. These are the Mazurkia Zinnias. Uh, what else? Is there anything else in here I didn't get? More of the Queen Lime with Blush Zinnias. So that's everything in that jar. All of the Celosia is the Autumn Blaze Celosia from Florette, which the birds just discovered yesterday and we're eating it. So I went ahead and harvested some of them. That is also cut and come again. Um, more of the queen lime, in fact, all the queen lime and the envy, is there anything? Oh, these are from the Florette Precious Metals collection. But other than that, I think these are all varieties that I've talked about. You are not in the water. Or you are broken. Oh no, we have a broken zinnia, I think. So you, unfortunately, well, maybe we can use this tiny little one somewhere. We'll stick you in there for now. Then I have my jar with my dahlia. So again, Celosia, I think all the asters and zinnias I have covered. Oh, I have my cupcake blush Cosmos. But then this pink one is the Otto's Thrill Dahlia. A branch actually broke off because I was not being careful, but that made it have a really long stem. So I think it'll work well in those vases. This was supposed to be a pink dahlia. I think you can tell it is purple. Um, I think it was called pizzazz something, something pizzazz, but that's not what this turned out to be. And then this orange one down here is the fairway spur. And that, I think, is everything that I have. So we'll go ahead and take all these flowers over to the wall. I need to fill all the vases with water and then we will make a display. And I think it's gonna look really, really pretty. Again, I wish that fresh flowers lasted as long as let's say dried flowers, which is why I dry so many flowers because then I can just use them as long as I want to. But I think this will look really pretty. First, I'm gonna move things out of the way just to make it easier. Like the plants in my garden, I also started putting the heavier house plants on wheels, which makes life so much easier. And then this chair also will scooch you over here. Now to fill up the larger vases, I'm just using this pitcher because the opening on these is large and this works really well. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way, maybe about halfway and if I need more water, I will add it after the flowers are in there. Same thing over here. I don't know if these are in stock anymore. I will look, but I'm pretty sure it was large and medium. I need some more water there. For the candelabra, I'm using this watering can because it has such a narrow spout. That really works the best so that I hopefully don't spill any water as I'm pouring this in there. Also not filling these all the way because especially in smaller vases, when I start to put a lot of stems in there, that obviously increases where the water is at as I put more things in the vase and that can lead to them overflowing. So I'd rather start with too little water and then add water at the end if I need it. I am starting with this Dahlia because it is my favorite of everything that I harvested and I want to make sure it's in the spot I want it. Again, this is the Otto's Thrill with a bunch of other dahlias that I accidentally broke off. And I might switch things around as I'm trying to figure out what works and what doesn't, but I'm thinking this one here. Although I might need other plants in it to keep it up, maybe something like that. Again, not committed, but I like it. I'm also grabbing some of my longer stem flowers that I harvested because I need longer stems for this vase and they might not even be long enough actually. And 
I'm just continuing to build here, moving things around. I do wish I could use chicken wire, but because the vases are clear, you would see that. So I'm just trying to intertwine the stems together in a way that holds the flowers where I want them. All right, I think I'm gonna leave this here for now. Again, might adjust some things in a little bit and move on to the other wall vase. I still need some pretty long stems, even though this is the smaller of the two. So I'm just gonna use these zinnias and try to crisscross them to make kind of like a cage to then weave other flowers through. I'll see if that works as planned. In there. All right, go with that for now. Put some in the middle candelabra. Well, this is it, and I actually used all of the flowers that I had. So no giveaway bouquets for today, but I will be making some again soon. But I love this. I am not at all a professional floral designer, but I love how this turned out. It makes me so happy. If there are ways that you know of, because again, trying to get those into the positions I wanted, but also using a clear vase, let me know if you have any solutions for that um, that aren't too visible, but this wall makes me so happy just walking in and seeing this for however long these flowers last is gonna bring me so much joy every morning. And I did add some more water to these vases just so I made sure all the stems were covered. Oh my gosh, but I'm so happy. I'm gonna take so many photos of this just so I can capture this moment, but I love this. And again, these flowers, this is how much I'm gonna to continue to harvest from my garden for the next few weeks until things start to slow down again. So this just makes me so happy. I know that, you know, some people tend to grow more veggies versus more flowers. I started more veggies. Right now I'm in a flower phase. I might get more into veggies a little bit, you know, in the next few years or something, but there's just something about flowers that make me so happy. I mean, I love my tomatoes. I love my zucchini, but I don't feel the same way when I come and see a bunch of tomatoes in the garden as I do when I see a bunch of flowers and being able to spread that joy to other people. So that's gonna be everything. I will link down anything I mentioned down below. Nothing this video is sponsored, just things that I love to make my home a little bit happier. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions and I will see you in the next video. Bye.